So this is going to be the last Off Monday Ramble of 2015, since I only do these every other week. And this is also the 50th episode of this series. So thank you all for watching this and, and for being at least sufficiently interested in it to justify <laughs> doing 50 of these. Uh, and I thought for the occasion, I, I, I wanted to talk about something a little lighter, maybe something a little Christmassy. Uh, the, the tone of the Off Monday Ramble series has sort of evolved into my space for talking about, you know, social justice type stuff. I talk about gun control and feminism and uh, racism. And I, that, that's been the sort of thing that I've gravitated towards in this series. And I'm not unhappy about that at all. I think that's great. I, I'm glad that this series has uh, sort of matured into my outlet for that sort of thing. But it's the 50th episode and it's Christmas and I thought I wanted to talk about something a little more lighthearted. But then uh, I saw the fucking news story that the Catholic Church has approved Mother Teresa for sainthood and she is to be canonized next year. And on the one hand, I think, yeah, but what do I care? I'm an atheist. I'm not a Catholic. It doesn't mean anything to me. But on the other hand... The Catholic Church, for better or worse, mostly worse, is a incredibly powerful institution in the world. I mean, it has its own country, for Christ's sake. The Pope, whether he deserves it or not, we could argue about that, is treated as a head of state by other countries, is given a great deal of respect and deference, and his word and his decisions carry a great deal of influence all over the world. So whether you're a Catholic or not, whether you approve of the Catholic Church or not, uh, whether you consider it to be a good thing or a bad thing or, or in what degree you you hold those hold it to have those attributes, uh, it's something that I think we have to talk about. And the 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 sainthood of Mother Teresa is something that obviously we've known it was coming for some time. But those of us who are not big fans of Mother Teresa, I, I can just hear the 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 wind being rustled all around the world from all of us just shaking our heads. You know, it's like this massive you know, atheist secular butterfly effect <laughs> where there must be massive winds being kicked up somewhere in the world because we're all just going, oh, God. I wanted to share with you uh, the, the miracle that... Uh, got Mother Teresa certified as a saint because the, the rule that the Catholic Church imposes is that in order for a deceased member of the church to be declared a saint, they have to have at least two authentic miracles attributed to them. And by that, they mean that someone prays to this person to intercede and then whatever they pray for happens and therefore the church concludes, well, you know, they were praying to Mother Teresa and then what they were praying for came to pass. Therefore, Mother Teresa must have interceded on their behalf. Therefore, Mother Teresa is a saint. She's in heaven with the power to intercede on behalf of God. That's that. Therefore, boom, saint, canonizer. And and that's that's what's going to happen. The the first miracle uh, that was attributed to Mother Teresa was in 2003. And Christopher Hitchens mentioned it in his piece at the time for uh, Salon.com, which is still posted, by the way, and I think was just reposted today by Salon in, in, uh, to mark the occasion, I suppose. Um, the, the first miracle attributed to Mother Teresa was a woman from uh, Bengal who claimed that a beam of light uh, had emanated from a picture of Mother Teresa that she had in her house. And after she saw that beam of light emanating from the picture of Mother Teresa, uh, she was cured of cancer. That, that's, that's the first miracle. And according to the, the Hitchens article here, uh, this woman who claims this miracle never actually had cancer. Uh, she had a cyst, actually, but the cyst was cured by medical treatment not by any anything miraculous or anything that that could be reasonably suspected of being miraculous. She was just she had a cyst and she was and she took her medicine and she was cured, but somehow that was counted by the Vatican as an intercessory miracle for Mother Teresa. The second one that has just been certified uh is not much better. The the second miracle is, is the the curing of a man in Brazil 
who had suffered from a viral brain infection and his wife apparently had been continuously praying to Mother Teresa uh, to intercede and to heal her husband. And uh, he, the man was about to undergo surgery when all of a sudden he sort of just woke up and he said he didn't feel any pain and his surgeons, uh, his doctors say that he went on to make a complete recovery. And also, even though he was sterile due to drug treatments, he also managed to go on and have two children. And this is all attributed to the, in, the intercession of Mother Teresa. Now, I don't know what the, uh, what, what the actual story is behind this. I don't know what actually happened. I don't know if, if the, this patient who was cured of this brain disease, this, this viral infection, and was able to father children despite being sterile, I don't know if he actually was those things, if doctors had ever diagnosed him of those things, or if it's a situation like the first Mother Teresa quote-unquote miracle where you know, it turns out that wasn't actually the situation to begin with. That's just the, that's just the story that was told to the church, and the church just accepted it and said, sounds good to us. Um, I don't I don't know what the situation is, but what struck me is I'm sure there must be thousands and thousands, perhaps even more, hundreds of thousands uh, of devout Catholics all around the world who pray to Mother Teresa fairly regularly. Mother Teresa is one of the most beloved recent figures in the church. So if you're a devout observant Catholic and you believe in the power of inter of intercessory prayer, you're, I mean, chances are there are thousands and thousands of intercessor of intercessory prayers being sent up to Mother Teresa all the time. And odds are that eventually, and, and the, the woman's been dead since 1997, so odds are, you know, at some point in the last over almost 20 years that a few of those intercessory prayers being sent up by the thousands in the name of Mother Teresa will appear to have come true. Because sometimes strange things happen. Sometimes e even even things that, that are difficult to explain scientifically. It doesn't mean that they're supernatural. It doesn't mean that we have to say, oh, it must have been Mother Teresa. But there are, there are phenomena such as, uh, you know, cancer going into spontaneous remission uh, or, or cancer responding uh, especially positively to, to treatment to, to the extent that it really surprises the doctors how effective the treatment. I mean, these sorts of things happen all the time. And if there are thousands and thousands of people all around the world in situations where they feel they need Mother Teresa to help them and they're praying to her, chances are within the space of 20 some odd years or, or almost 20 years, uh, a few of them are going to turn up to look like a miracle has taken place. And here we are at Christmas time, the time of, of charity and of giving and of coming together. And uh, who is being canonized? Who, whose canonization is being announced a week before Christmas by the Catholic Church, approved by Pope Francis, is Mother Teresa, this woman who earned her reputation as being a, a, a wonderful uh, friend of the poor, and again, to go back to Christopher Hitchens, uh, she does not seem to have been a friend to the poor, but rather a friend to poverty. She was someone who whose idea of helping the poor and helping the sick, helping the destitute, helping the terminally ill was to warehouse them and just allow them to lay there and die without advanced medical treatment, without painkillers in most cases. I think in some cases they were allowed, uh, uh, attendants were allowed to give people uh, pain medicine that wasn't much stronger than an aspirin. But I mean, she, she had people in her facilities who were dying of, of advanced cancers and infections and, and things that caused real awful, unbearable pain. And they were left to just lay there in pain. And this is the woman who is held up as, as the great friend to the poor. She also was a, an enemy of the poor and a friend of poverty in, in a much broader, more socially significant sense. It's bad enough that she was cruel to the people actually laying and suffering in her facilities under her supposed care. It's bad enough that she uh, romanticized and, and, and fetishized suffering and saw suffering and, 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 and lying in agony as, as an example of, of being close to God. That's all atrocious enough. But she was also an, an, a political enemy of causes that 
sought to lift up people in poverty. Again, as, as Christopher Hitchens wrote in his piece in 2003 in Salon, Mother Teresa was a consistent enemy of women's rights. She was a consistent enemy of abortion rights. Uh, she considered bor abortion to be uh, the greatest threat to peace in the world. And she said so. And she, she campaigned tirelessly in multiple countries against efforts to legalize abortion or improve access to abortion for women. Again, as Hitchens says, I keep going back to Hitchens because he literally wrote the book on her um, and his piece from 2003 about the certification of her first miracle is just excellent. And he writes, he wonders, how can you say that Mother Teresa was a friend of the poor rather than a friend of poverty when she was such a vocal and persistent opponent of what Hitchens calls the only known cure for poverty, which is the empowerment of women. And that was something that Mother Teresa steadfastly opposed. She was an enemy of women's rights. She was an enemy of the poor. She was a friend of poverty and a friend of suffering. And here we are a week before Christmas 2015 and the, the Christmas gift that the Catholic Church has chosen to bestow on Catholics all around the world and on the rest of us is sainthood for Mother Teresa. Now, before I go, there there are a few more things I want to talk to you about. Last week on my uh, uh, You Had to Ask video, I or not last week, the week before last, I suppose I should say, since this, this will be up on Monday, uh, I asked a lot of you guys to go to the YouTube channel of Liz Reptile and watch her video about the, the struggles that she's been having financially and, and to help her out if possible so she can pay some bills and have a nice Christmas for her kids and her family. And, and you guys, some of you were able to do that and were willing to do that and donated to her cause. And I, I have heard from Liz personally that uh, a lot of the help she received came from people who heard about her story through me, either through that video or through me tweeting it or talking about it on Facebook. So I just want to thank you guys who helped out Liz Reptile. And I will link to Liz's video in the description of this video. So just in case you didn't hear about it before and you would like to help, uh, you can see what the situation is and you can help out Liz Reptile if you want because uh, she's not completely out of the hole yet, but she has been... Um, she has seen her situation uh, significantly improved in the last couple of weeks. And a lot of it is thanks uh, to you guys who found out about her through me. So I really, really appreciate that. I also want to share another uh, fundraiser type of thing with you guys. Uh, Christmas is the season of giving. If, if you have something to give and you're looking for a place to give it, my friend Jenny McDermott, who a lot of you know, who some of you like and some of you hate, I understand. She's a very divisive figure. But Jenny is someone who is a friend of mine who has always been nice to me and always been good to me. And unfortunately, uh, her workplace was terribly damaged in a fire last month. And uh, because of the, the damage and because of the loss of business, the uh, much of the staff of the restaurant where she, she works uh, has had to be laid off. And uh, Jenny has started a GoFundMe page to raise money to sort of help raise some supplemental funds for the members of staff for the restaurant that have been put out of work as a result of this fire. So I'm going to link that as well. When I shared Liz Reptile's fundraiser, I said, you know, I, I don't think Liz and I see eye to eye on things uh, personally all the time, uh, but she was a person in need who was brought to my attention and I felt like it was the right thing to do to give her a boost and to encourage people to, to give to her cause. And I would say the same thing about Jenny. Jenny is not someone I disagree with on a lot of things. I consider her a friend. I consider her an ally, uh, even though a lot of other people I consider friends and allies don't like her. But if you are moved by the Christmas spirit, if you are in uh, the, the situation where you are able to afford to help out, to just throw a couple of bucks her way or to share the fundraiser with other people and maybe uh, boost its profile a bit so that someone else maybe can, can support this cause and help these people out who are out of work over the holidays, uh, regardless of how you feel about her personally, I would really appreciate that. And I think that would be a wonderful thing to do. So both of those are in the description box of this video. You can go check out the GoFundMe page for uh, Jenny's restaurant that has been burned out. And you can also uh, go check out Liz Reptile's situation if you would like to donate to her as well. Uh, I think both of those will be wonderful acts of charity and acts of kindness and giving here a week, less than a week now uh, out 
from Christmas. Hey folks, hope you found this video to be of some use to you. If you did, please like it and share it and subscribe to this channel if you're not subbed already. Also, please consider helping me to make more videos like this by supporting this channel through Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash steveshives to become a patron. Thanks for watching.